today's going to be a four a card oracle you pick with diet across a finish for each of the four afterwards so i hope you like the video if you do please do like it it helps a lot if you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe it's not hard and uh, thank you very very much for watching I am Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. So it's still time for a little uh, me therapy, meaning you therapy. And so this will be a four card uh, oracle. Uh, we'll uh, lay those four cards out. We'll determine what each one will mean for you. So pick one of them, or several of them, or all of them, with a question, and uh, then we'll do a diet across to uh, get to, down to the nitty gritty uh, on each one. I've got this is the Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot. Um, it's just another take on uh, from Los Scarbio on um, the, um, the classic Rider Waite Tarot. But uh, apparently this person wise has had their input into it. And uh, the, what I love about it, first of all, it's got a great container. I always feel like what I think of when I open these containers is if I got this as a gift, but what I think about it, and I think, well, this is very nice. When you get into the box, I mean, it gives you a hint right from the beginning what you're gonna see. It's a close-up of the cards in kind of rich color with kind of a, a tinged uh, overtone to kind of give it an antique look, in my opinion. Anyway, the cards themselves, I'll go over, but I want to tell you first about the instruction booklet. And you know, it's a typical instruction booklet that you get with any of these decks. It's in a few different languages, and it just gives you some basic uh, uh, meanings of how to divide the cards. But what's good about it and is that it gives you a really terrific uh, synopsis of uh, how uh, uh, this uh, uh, Rider Waite uh, system was developed and when and by who. It talks a, a little enough about uh, Arthur Waite and Pamela Coleman Smith who were the creators of this and the Kabbalistic uh, theory and history of all of that. Um, it is, uh, gives you a real quick mention about the Golden Dawn, which is very significant to the development of these cards. And then it gives you a really great little section about how to read the tarot and storytelling through the cards. So I like the little book. I mean, it's nothing earth shattering. It's not information that most people don't know, but it is uh, interesting. Now the cards themselves, they got a cool back. They're kind of shiny and, um, you're going to see that kind of what they are is like they've kind of made a close-up of the typical tarot uh, images and then colored them in very vibrantly and then oversprayed the whole thing with sort of an antique kind of a, a feel. So they're great for me. I've got a few uh, vision problems and so in that they're close up, but they're still vibrant with color. And I think these are going to look great on the camera. Uh, I like to uh, spread the cards out like this for a couple of reasons. One is it's a good way to show you uh, more than a couple of cards that you get to see in the typical tarot drawing and that's something that I always wanted to see. I wanted to know more about what the cards I was looking at when, before I was making the videos. And number two, it's a good way to um, shuffle the cards up without damaging them too much. And if you're reading for someone else, then there's a third uh, benefit is that you can let someone else do this kind of spread around if they're not comfortable with making a shuffle or, and then you kind of get their energy into the cards. So this is the uh, Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot and I just like them a lot. So this is, okay, so this will be a four card oracle you pick. So just do your part right now. Ease your mind. Perhaps take a nice deep breath and let it out slowly. Focus in on what's important to you right now. What uh, issue or questions do you want addressed by, the, by these cards? Make it something that you think a yes or no answer will apply to, even though we're going to go in and flesh those four cards out with the dyadic cross uh, afterwards. Okay, so this is going to be a four card. Let me divide these into four stacks. Put them back together. And we'll spread them out and choose four and get on with our business. One, two, three, and four. Okay, I'm going to put this aside for the moment. I'll take these cards and put them right here so that you can... Uh, 
I can't uh, seem to get coordinated. So that you can choose. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four. Remember, this is a time that you can take a, a deep breath, get relaxed, think about what's it, your issue, decide which card or cards are important to you. One, two, three, four. Remember, you can stop this tape at any time if you need a minute to get a drink of water, uh, answer the door, whatever it might be, or just center yourself. One, two, three, four. And for the final, one, two, three, and four. Hope you picked your cards. And now we'll reveal them one at a time. The first card, if that's what you picked, is the High Priestess. This is a terrific card. This is the second card of the uh, of the Major Arcana, but it's the third card in the Fool's Journey. The zero being the Fool, the number one being the Magician, and then right the next thing he meets is the High Priestess, and she comes to us with strength, with knowledge, with uh, uh, virtue, fruitful, and all-knowing. And this is a big yes card uh, with introspection. So the High Priestess, if you chose this number one card, this is a big, strong uh, indication that yes, Whatever this issue is, yes, it's going to be going in that direction. The number two card, if that's the one you chose, is the sun card. The sun is a fantastic card to get. It's also another big yes card. And uh, my TV came on there. It's also a big yes card. And uh, the sun brings uh, knowledge, uh, uh, floods the issue with clarity. Um, it's a new start quite often um, and uh, is everything hopeful uh, in the uh, the issue that you may be addressing here. So the number two card is a yes card. It's a sun. It's a terrific positive uh, yes to get. Now if you chose number three, okay, this is the Ace of Swords. Ace of Swords is a great big offer of truth, justice, rules, law. It's uh, imposing, and it's uh, 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 another yes card, and, and very uh, positive uh, in your direction. So if you chose number three, that's a very strong uh, yes card. Now if you chose number four, we've got the King of Cups. And these have all been very nice cards today. So the King of Cups is the King of, look at that, he's riding on an ocean of emotion. You know, he has a sea of compassion. He has the chalice of cups in his hand. He's ready to offer it uh, to uh, you. And uh, he has a staff of knowledge and and, uh, and planning in his other hand. This king is in charge of emotions. This is a big yes card. And it's something that you can uh, feel some authority with if this is the uh, card that you chose, okay? Now I'm gonna turn most of these back over, of course, except for the first one, and then we'll dive a little deeper with a dyadic cross, with this being the signifier card for that. Okay, so the High Priestess, all-knowing, full of strength and knowledge and will and, uh, and, and intuition, uh, maybe more importantly uh, than anything else. So we're gonna take five cards to finish this dyadic cross. This will be one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, here we go. The challenge to this high priestess, this strong intuition, this very positive, all-knowing card. The challenge to that ah, is uh, the nine of wands, which is feeling embattled, uh, really um, having lots of issues, either having just dealt with or you're about to deal with them, but you have one plan uh, securely in your hand and uh, with an idea of how to go about it. So the challenge to this all-knowing is this embattlement that we're about to um, uh, engage in. Okay, So trust your intuition. That's what I take from this. Trust your intuition and what's right. Okay, The base of this reading then is the five of swords funny that i would mention what's right when the first uh, the base of this reading then comes up as a card that um is um you know an abuse of power kind of someone taking advantage of the situation to someone else's detriment this could be you or one of these could be you but the base of this issue what brought it all about was this um uh, unfairness in this five of swords the uh, past of this reading is the King of Pentacles. You know, the King of Pentacles, Pentacles are worth a value that can actually be money. And the King of Pentacles is very strong in his belief that he has the value. This fellow has a very calm, serene face because he is secure in the knowledge that what he's going to decide is in the very best interest of his, his uh, subjects, himself, and the issue at hand. So the King of Pentacles is a very secure way to have come into this uh, issue, especially when there's some doubt and, and worry about embattlement that could uh, per, uh, ensue. 
And the sky of this reading then is justice. Okay, that's what we want to aim for. We want to aim for truth. We want to aim for fairness. We want to aim for balance. And justice is where we need is what we need to seek. Okay, so that's what's in the sky, justice. And it could even mean that that is actually uh, what's going to come forth once we get through this. And then the final outcome for this uh, draw then is the um, Eight of Cups. And this is leaving something behind of, of emotional value. Okay, these cups are st stood upright. We presume that they're full. And uh, this fellow has had to say, look, this is a lot here, but I know there's something better here or something more valuable or something worthwhile to turn my back on this Eight of Cups and continue going in this direction. Direction. So that's what you've got. Just to talk about it again, we've got the uh, High Priestess as a signifier card. That's you, okay? Intuition is key in this and the knowledge that you know uh, about this issue that you're dealing with. Uh, it's, an, it's an embattled uh, situation. It's uh, uh, It's been a hard slog already or you know it's going to be. There's been some sort of a, an injustice. The King of Pentacles means that you're coming into this with all your value, all your worth, whether you realize it or not, you have it there. You just have to look for it. Shoot for justice. That's always the way to go. Look for truth, rules, balance. And then um, in the end, you may have to turn away from something that seems like it was emotionally very important, but just know that you're just continuing on your journey. That's all it is. You're just continuing on to the next uh, step in your uh, metamorphosis, really. Okay, so that's number one if that's what you chose. Now we're we'll going to number two, the sun. Another yes card, very enlightened, um, lots of positive, uh, clear, uh, joyous uh, celebration really almost. So the sun, the number two card, if that's what you chose, is the signifier for this dyadic cross that we have right here. Okay, we're going to take five cards to finish that off. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, scoop these up, put them out of the way, and then see how we're going to define th this issue a little bit further. The sun is the signifier. The challenge to that is the Page of Pentacles. You know, the Page is a messenger. He's bringing an idea. He's bringing some, a little uh, offer of value for consideration for this situation. Um, and so that being the challenge to all this clarity um, should mean that you can look at this issue, if you take a deep breath, step back from it, look at this issue in full sunshine, okay? The base of this reading is the Knight of Cups. You know, the Knight of Cups is going to take the charge he's been given. He's going to take this uh, emotional situation and he's going to move it forward. Okay. He's going to make this happen. Uh, he's going to cross over a river of emotions, of passions, uh, but he's well equipped to take on the task. Okay. And that's the base of this. So that's a nice foundation to start off on. Uh, the past of this reading, look at that, the cards are turning up again. I love that when that happens. It just kind of reaffirms to me that the cards are playing along with us. This is the Eight of Cups, and like I said, this is turning away from something of emotional value. That may be what has happened in the past as far as you're concerned, or maybe someone um, dealing with you has, has had this feeling or this actual situation. In the sky of this reading, uh, this is the Seven of Wands. And for me, the Seven of Wands is just the beginning of an embattlement, okay? This fella is sturdy. But what's interesting about the uh, the fella in the Seven of Wands, notice his footwear. He's got one uh, either socked foot or booted foot, almost looks like a socked foot, and then one shoed foot. So he's not exactly on the best foot. Footing, although he is in an advantage, he has a plan. He's going to fend off these actions, these uh, 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 movements, uh, these plans uh, that are poking up at him. And so right now, that's what we need to focus on is getting our footing and dealing with these issues with a solid plan. Okay, and then the likely outcome of this is very good in the Ten of Pentacles because the Ten of Pentacles is almost uh, like familial wealth, but it doesn't necessarily have to be cash, money, that kind of wealth, although it certainly could be. It can also just be the value of the situation, the value involved in, a, in a, whatever your family is. And our families are so uh, diversely defined. It could be your mom, uh, a dad, and a child or children. It can be the people that you've gathered around you as your family on your journey. Uh, so... This is a very nice uh, resolution. So we uh, have light on the subject. We have uh, the challenge to it is this offer, this idea, this messenger of value. The um, 
the base of it is this knight who's going to carry this forward, this emotional situation forward with caution. Uh, and we've turned away from something that we thought or have been turned away from, something that we thought was an emotional value. And then um, the seven of uh, pentacles tells us that, you know, this may be the beginning of a little bit of embattlement. Get yourself on short footing and just know that it's going to work out to your advantage. Okay. So that's number two, if that's what you chose. Okay. Now we're going to put these back and look at the third card, if that was your choice. And of course, that's the Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords is a big offer of truth, justice, and rules. Okay. It's strong. It's imposing. And it's telling us, yes, this is how we're going to deal with this. So we're going to take five cards out of that. One, two, three, four, and five. Have a little interruption there. I do get emails and messages that I have to respond to uh, sometimes. So I had to uh, stop uh, just to full stop while I was doing this. I've laid out the cards for the Dynamic Cross, just trying to pick myself up from where I was. And um, now we'll define it better. So Ace of Swords, Offer of Tooth Justice. And uh, this is challenged by, ah, the Four of Cups. <laughs> the Four of Cups is telling us that, listen, there's an offer being made that is questionable. This fellow's arms are crossed, his legs are crossed. He's in a defensive position and saying, this emotional offer I'm not sure about. doesn't mean it can't be taken, but it is a challenge to, the, to our strong uh, sense of truth and justice and rules. Okay, so it requires thought. The uh, base of this reading then, again, is the Page of Pentacles like we just had before. Like I say, I always love when the cards repeat because it tells me that they're playing the game with us. And um, so this Page of Pentacles is the least strong of the court cards. He's bringing a solid, it's like a nugget of gold that he's got here. This is something to uh, work with. This is an idea to nurture. Okay, it almost looks like he's nurturing that idea. Okay, that's the base here. Now, the past of this reading is the Seven of Swords, or I'm sorry, the Six of Swords. The Six of Swords is moving out of troubled water, moving into a calmer port, taking your charges and protecting them with a strong plan of how to get this thing going. Okay, that's how we kind of came into this. In the sky of this reading is the Eight of Wands, which are actions, motions, plans, uh, really coming at this in a strong uh, fashion. And then the likely outcome, though, is long-term planning, the Three of Wands. The Three of Wands, this fellow is secure. He's grounded. He has his hand on the future. He's got uh, the plans behind him, and he's looking forward to see what's going to happen uh, in the future. So, yeah, let's give this some force, forethought. The uh, Ace of Swords, a strong offer of truth, justice, rules. A challenge by something that we're not sure emotionally we're prepared to take right now. Doesn't mean that we won't, but that's the challenge, sorting it out. There's been an, a, a solid value uh, offered up to us. We've had to move somehow out of a little bit of a troubled uh, port into something calmer with all these actions, but know that with long-term planning, with thought, uh, yes, this is going to be a positive uh, move in the direction you want to go. And now I have to answer my phone again. So we'll incorporate these back into the pack and then move on to the fourth card, if that's the one you chose today. And of course, that's the King of Cups. Love these cards. I mean, they're so vibrant. They're clear. They're big pictures. And it's really a pleasure to work with them. Hold on. Gosh, I've had lots of interruptions for this reading today. So if the fourth card is the one you chose, it's the King of Cups. You know, cups are emotion, passion, uh, compassion. And this will be the signifier card for this dyadic cross. Let me just get my self back in sync. Okay, the King of Cups is a very strong yes card to have. We're going to take five cards. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. And then with that signifier, we'll see what is the challenge to this very compassionate, caring king. The challenge to that, oh, look at that. How funny that I mentioned a caring king, and then the challenge to it is being left out in the cold. Outside the church, really, it looks like. These uh, uh, beggars or these uh, poor souls are out here, and 
it all possibly is right on the other side of that wall. So the compassionate king challenge is uh, that there are people who are not taking advantage of what is right behind them. Okay, so that's this. So this yes card is kind of sullied a little bit with this difficulty right here. The base of this reading then is also planning, but these are short-term plans. So this fellow has got his hand on the future. He's looking uh, at the globe to decide, you know, what is going to be the next move. Uh, his past is securely fastened. And uh, yeah, so this is a short-term plans of maybe what's needed to uh, move this situation along. In the past, we had the Ten of Cups, which is everything beautiful, coming up rainbows and roses, uh, happy family celebrations. So thank goodness we had that. Uh, before we came into this uh, decision that we have to make. And then in the sky of this is a great big offer. Just like this is a great big offer of truth and justice, this is a plan. These are actions. This is going to happen. You only have to follow, okay? You have to uh, follow through and make sure uh, that you uh, respect the fact that these plans have to be made. And then the final outcome of this is the Queen of Cups. And that's beautiful to get both the Queen and the King uh, in the one draw. Now, the Queen of Cups, uh, again, don't be mistaken that uh, that she's all about compassion. And, and because under her seat, you see there's a little imp right here, you know, looking for an opportunity to cause a little disturbance. She's got this cup of emotions, but she hasn't quite opened it yet. So it's being offered, but there's a stern um, responsibility. I think it's going to come with it. So, so yeah. So this uh, difficulty is a uh, bookend by both the king and the queen. And just to talk about again, the king of, of cups is the, is solidly in charge of the emotions. It's challenged by uh, feeling left out in the cold, uh, underpinned by short-term plannings uh, that uh, will uh, you know ensure a movement forward. Uh, we had. Uh, you know, all the trophies of emotional celebration to come into this with. We have to have, we have to shoot for a big plan uh, that overall is going to make this uh, move. And then uh, with this uh, Queen of Cups, letting us know that there's help here, but we need to consider it uh, carefully. Love that. So those are the four Oracle cards that we have today. And I'm so glad that you tuned in. So just like it was a little bit difficult for me to get through this reading today with a few interruptions, a few phone calls, a few messages, emails, um, that's how life is. You know, you have to keep our eye on the prize and keep moving forward. So those four cards, I hope they were useful to you. I hope you got something out of that. If it didn't quite ring true for you today, hang on to it. Think about it again tomorrow in a couple days. Maybe it applies to someone you know, or it may not be for you at all today. Move on. Okay? But thank you so much. Well, I'm Mark. This has been my journey through tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go, so stop on by. Ciao for now.